podcast is part of the No Phony Podcast Network, the home of independent awesomeness. Welcome to episode 268 of Bats and Balls Podcast. I'm Josh Button, joined as always by my good friend Brendan Smith. Hey mate, I'm glad you've uh, cleared your concussion. Uh, I'm glad you also got trained up to be in the bunker. They mate, needed all the officials they could get. I got lost on the mid-north coast. I finally made it back out, so I'm, I'm good. I'm good to go. Good stuff. Mm. And I've been up, uh, had a little visit to um, see my dad at uh, Crescent Head, and it was good. Went for a long bike ride, over 60 k's, which was fun. 40 k's from Creso to uh, Hat Head, and then 20 k's back through the bush, which was uh, a hassle. <laughs> hassle, to say the <laughs> least. It was sand dunes up and down, and... Quite soft sand in the four-wheel drive track, and um, for most of it, I was walking up the hills because it was so soft, but yeah. Awesome. Pre- pre- memories of flying down the hills on the bike and trying to stay upright, and that was fun. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to jump straight into this because what a round of NRL it's been. Now, Let's last go. week, we had a lot of NRL. Yeah. I suspect this week's probably going to be similar. There'll be a bit of AFL because I'm obviously... I saw a few games. A couple so of games can, of AFL can... I saw as well. Crack up, but... We're recording on a Monday night, yeah. and as regular listeners would know, no man basketball happens on Monday night, yeah. so we are on a time limit. Yes, we are, so we're going to be flying for this. Yeah. Um, but as well, hmm. um, <laughs> very little AFL last week, as you would have heard. Yeah, no, that. that's that's fine. That's I did like, listen to the show. It was good. Um, I, that was, I, I caught the show on the drive home from, uh, from Creso, so that was good. Um, but the... Yeah, it's a lot to go through in that NRL Mate, again. there's a lot to talk about in the NRL. <laughs> magic round was magic for all the right reasons. And, and me as a former ref, I was very happy with it. As uh, And to one person on Twitter in particular who called people Muppets who didn't, who didn't like, uh, who liked what was going on, pull your heads in. So we're going to start from the top. Mm. West Tigers 36, Knights 18. So... I'm going to just take these games one at a time because yes, it's a bit no, of a go let's for do everything, that. right? Yeah. So, the people are blowing up in this game because it's four sin bins in this match. There was only one for illegal contact. The no, there was of... none for illegal contact. Wasn't there one right at the end? No, I thought... no. That was all for holding down in the ruck. Right. Continual okay. ruck infringements, yeah. which they did come out two weeks ago and say, we're not going to tolerate anymore. Yeah. You keep giving them away, you're going... They oh, should have obvious. said that at the start of the season, though. When they when the talk of you know six games and all that, sure, they should have happened then. Sure, sure. That, that look, I agree. But they found out there's coaches are going to manipulate it, which we all knew was going to happen to start with. Mm. And the they've done something about it. Two weeks ago, they said we're going to not going to tolerate this anymore. They let it go in round nine. The referee's got a, a rocket. They're not going to tolerate it anymore. And look, I think two of them come in the last two minutes of the match. Yeah. So, people blowing up about this, pull your heads in. It's that, That's player fault. Yeah. Player and fault. There was a little bit, because there was a few high contacts that were put on report, and you know, that, that didn't really change the game, apart from, you know, it gives you the option of a of a interchange, and yeah, you know, a couple of other things, you know, brings the, um, brings the, the replacement into play a little bit more, doesn't it? If you go for yeah. HI and that kind of thing, but really, it didn't affect the way the game was played, apart from the fact that a couple of guys got put on report. And we're talking about high shots, yeah. So yeah, it didn't didn't really change much. Um, for the most part, Newcastle will look lost now. Obviously, we did the show last week prior to Ponga being ruled out. Um, so that made a hell of a difference for the uh, Knights mm. and the Knights really struggled. They had a lot of players out. You know now. <laughs> West Tigers made some changes too, though. No, no, I know West Tigers, but before we get to hmm. the Tigers, right? And, I'm, and the Knights had um, no Green, no no Pierce, no Ponga, uh, whoever else out for them, right? They had all their forwards. They had all their forwards, but they still had Pierce, Ponga, Green. Um, most of the forwards are there, hmm. but do you reckon Ponga and Pierce are more important? to the Knights than a couple of the Roosters guys who are in a depleted Rooster side? No, I hear what you're saying. And <laughs> I heard you talking about a bunch of different depleted sides last week and they just get on with it. Yeah. And But yeah. you don't hear it in commentary com- constantly. No, you hear about the depleted Roosters because they're missing a few guys. But 
They've still got a stack of rep players. They've got more rep players than Paramount. Canterbury had nine players out. I did not hear the word depleted Canterbury team once. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> True. Not once. Like, come on. That, that is a piss take. Yeah. Uh, the West Tigers, though. Do you have any, want... anything more about the Knights? Because the West no. Tigers, they, they made some changes. Mm. Put Dewey out in the centres. Luke Brooks on the ball more and left Mbai to just run and sort of inject himself. And... I always thought the Brooks M by pairing, that was the way to do it. Let Brooks run it all and let M by come in just when he wants to and and find the holes where where they are. And I think moving forward that's good for them. But then you're putting Dewey, who's been one of their best players, probably their best player, now out in the centres and touching it probably half the time. Yeah, but he got he got he got a couple of good touches in this game. Look, I, I think it had more to do with their opposition more so than than how good they were. No doubt. No um, doubt. I, I mean, West Tigers aren't still... They're still not a top eight side, but no. they did play pretty well in this game. Yeah, they did. They played pretty good. Um, maybe they just like the magic round. Perhaps. They want every week to be magic round. Mm. Uh, next game, the Seagulls 50, Broncos 6. Now, look, the Broncos were getting beaten in these score lines without, without Simbins and send-offs. Yeah. Right? Um... Again, four sin bins in this game. Uh, two were for ruck infringements. Is that correct? I think the first two. Josh Schuster. Josh Schuster got sent off, uh, put in the sin bin late in the game. Oh no! Uh, but no, the two manly ones were for ruck infringements. Uh, six again infringement. Josh Schuster just held in, held the ball in, mm. and then got wonder why he got sin binned. And Lachlan Croker did it with like a minute to go on the clock. Yeah. Um. So and I think they yeah, I think they're both more off the last ten minutes, but or the last couple of minutes. But the the two Brisbane ones, one was for Jordan Ricky using his head mm-hmm. to tackle. Now, look, headbutt is a send bin defence. It's a send off offence. It's not a send bin defence. It's a yeah, send off offence. Yeah. They almost so the went people, light. <laughs> so 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 the people who are complaining about that, oh, that's gone soft. You can't use your head. Yeah, you can't stick your head in. There. That is the dumb act. Yeah, and it was blatant. Like it was a, a blatant, blatant headbutt, right? That is a sin bin. Oh, it's a send off. A send off. It's yes. a send off. They went light on that one. Light, right? <laughs> now, uh, Tyson Gamble. Well, Tyson Gamble. Yeah, Tyson Gamble. High shot. Mm. Sin bin. Shoulder straight to head. Mm-hmm. Straight to jaw. That's the exact contact they're trying to get out. Right? And and people saying it, it was soft. It was also his second one in the game. Yeah. So it's you got to look at it a bit like soccer. You get a warning for one, he gets put on a report. That's your warning. The second one you got to go because you haven't learned anything. Yeah. Right. This garbage. This garbage of people saying, "Oh, he was wrong footed. He was he was fatigued. I, he was he was quick to run over to the ref for a fatigued player mm. to plead his case." Right. So don't give me that crap. He got there. He jumped. He was off the ground, shoulder to head. It's a simbin. Yep. Under the new rule, it's a simbin. You know what? That the rule, These rules haven't changed. These rules have been here since 1908. They're only enforcing them now. They're, oh, yeah. they used to enforce them. In yeah. the early 90s, I'd send them off. Mm. They let it go because people like Bill Harrigan didn't do much and people like Gus Gould said, oh, you can't have stuff like this. You need to be, let it flow and stuff like that. You've got to get serious on this stuff. And look, people saying it's gone soft. I, I, I'm not going to go into some of the stuff until after we finish these games. I just want to try and keep to what we're what the actual thing is, but yep. I've got a bit to say after these games. Bulldogs, uh, Raiders 2, Ra- Raiders 20, Bulldogs 18. The one that got away for the Bulldogs. Absolutely was. <laughs> Absolutely was. Um, I think there was only two in this game. Yeah, Papali send off. Yep. And um, Jack White and put in the sin bin for a hip toss. Mm. So it was it was done. He came from behind him and he dived in at his back of his legs, which they're trying to rule out. Right? And it was forceful in the back of the legs. So no problem with him getting sin binned either. And the high shot was shoulder straight to like face. Yeah. And the guy taken off a concussion yeah. and didn't return. Case co- case closed. The guy wasn't falling and he just banged shoulder to the head. Yeah. Now yeah, I'll get to the players falling soon. But wow! But that one, that was, was that bad. was he was standing up and straight in, straight into his jaw. Yep, yep. Um, back on the last game, Tommy Turbo killed it. Him and oh, yeah. him and him and what's the name? 
Who's a winger? Saab. You know, the best player on that ground was Jake Turbo also, though. He he had a he wound the clock back. And I've been critical of Jake Turbo this year. I think he's become a bit of a plotter. And he, Do you think he just gets lost a bit, brother? Well, perhaps, but what? it's the game plan as well. He takes it to the line, but he doesn't run hard at the line and then ball play. He's just another halfback. Mm. And he's a, a bad halfback because he's not taking the line on like, yeah. like you know, some halfbacks do. He's just getting it, get, taking a few steps and then turning it out the back. This game, he actually Had engaged run, the line, yeah. hit the line hard first and then turned to the ball playing. And that's what made the holes because yeah. he actually, he, he, um, he, he threatened the line and threatened the fact that he was actually going to go through the line first, then went to the ball playing. Yeah, a, a much better game from Jake. And, yeah, I've criticised him in the past. This game, much better. Yeah, I agree. Um, the Raiders, Bulldogs. Raiders, with 12 players, scored the last 10 points to win this one. 18, uh, to, to go from 18-10. I don't know. It must have been 12-10 down. 12-10 down to go 20-12 ahead. And then, yeah. Bulldogs got one Bulldogs late. Bulldogs got one late. Yeah. Um, yeah, the... the well, the the Bulldogs should have won this game with mm. one player less, but I don't know how it was this game. There was a few send offs, but somehow teams kept getting overlaps with the window play it short all weekend. Like, it was all very, weekend. Yeah, it was very weird. <laughs> yeah, uh, but this is indicative of how bad the Raiders are going because the Bulldogs are clearly the worst team in the comp, mm. and they struggle to get past them. That's right. Not even Ra- one short. Like Raiders are struggling. They are not that good, mm. and we'll come back to what Ricky said. After the game, because what he said was absolute... He's, he's cracking jokes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rabbits, 32. Sharks, 22. Um, uh, Sua got put in the sin bin for a pretty nasty high shot. Um, come back and made an absolute cracker of a tackle later on. I can't remember if anyone else got put off in this game. I watched all these games of interest because I just wanted to see who got put off. Uh, I can't really remember... Who else, if anyone, got put off in this game? No, no, I can't help you with this game. I didn't watch it at all. I was but, um, preparing for the Giants later on. But for the most part, the Rabbits were always in control and Sharks didn't really throw that much. So the Sharks were getting back into the game and making it a contest and then they there was a random thing where Chad Townsend, after a kick through, come across the top and look, you could argue it was a crusher, but it was reasonably soft. Minimal contact. Uh, I know Nathan put something on saying, um, or Big Mindy, he put on there saying, look, he had a similar incident and caused him a bit of grief. So I can understand it. But they let the play go on for the whole set. The Rabbits then kick downfield and they kept the Sharks catch a ball on the 30 metre line to come all the way back up to the goal line to restart the set and give him a penalty and mm. put Chad Townsend on a report. Like, I, I don't agree with that. Too long a um, oh, too long a break. Yeah, couple of tackles. If you don't catch it, then move on. Let's let's keep the game flowing a little bit. Yep. Um. But other than that, like and that and that killed the sharks. The sharks were fighting back at that point, and it killed really killed their momentum. Mm. But, um, look, it's foul play. <laughs> doesn't doesn't make it right, but they need to catch it quicker. The bunker. Um. But yeah, rabbits too good in that one, and they get Latrell back this week. So that might, that'll make a difference for them. Next game, Roosters 30, Cowboys 16. Um, uh, Cowboys had a player in the sim bin for a high shot on Tedesco, mm-hmm. which he was about two foot off the ground. This caused again. a lot of um, discussion on Twitter, mm-hmm. and it seems like the entire rugby, the entire rugby league um, watching community, at least on Twitter, and probably Facebook as well, uh, have turned on James Tedesco in two weeks. No, I think they've just been listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> it seems it seems like all of a sudden, James Tedesco is public enemy number one. And it's not even... Yeah, it's the way he plays the game, but he's not, you know, he's not making the rules. He's not deciding who gets sent to the sin bin or anything like that. It's Correct. just the way he plays. My, my grief's not really at him. It's, oh, it is at him, right? Hmm. But he's got a duty of care to himself, sure, to to stay more upright. He's falling into tackles, yeah, right. You fall into tackles, you, you're asking for trouble. And there was, and and you can and you can ask Colby as well because I was as his house watching this game. Hmm. 
I watched. I said, just sit here and watch Tedesco. Right, just watch him. And every time he touches the ball, watch him. I watched on five or six separate occasions after that tackle, he passed the ball out and dropped to his knees instantly. Mm. If there's a player in front of him, what's the player going to do? If you're dropping at a rapid rate, the player can't just change. He's, he's committed to the tackle. He can't just disappear. I don't know if we've spoken about this particular, what he does, the way he does it. Is it because he's been had so many like career-threatening injuries with his knees and that? Possibly. And it's just... just like he, I'm not saying he's soft, but he he's subconsciously shying away from the contact. I don't know. I don't know if that's what it is. I think uh, it's just the way he evades tackles. Yeah, but like even when he passes, though, he's off balance mm. and he falls down onto his knees. So it's just a balancing, and it's it's like you wouldn't put your helmet down in NFL because you get your head your head will get smashed, mm. right? It's it's the same like it's a duty of care to himself, and if the Roosters coach and staff aren't pulling him aside, going, "Look, mate, we're watching the video. You're dropping. You're asking for a concussion." Now, right now, they're probably going, "Oh, this is great for us. Hmm. You, you cop it." But you can't keep copying it in the head. That's right. And it's different to AFL. Like I'll go a couple of AFL players for being duckers and and floppers, but it's different because in AFL, the contact's normally coming from the side or behind. And they're ducking to get the high contact. They're just getting a free, but they're not. They're not really risking too much injury. Mm. Whereas in rugby league, when it's front on contact, the way rugby league is played, the way it's you know basically north south, the contact is always a bit harder each tackle. And if you're dropping, then you're gonna wear a forearm to the jaw of fairly often. Mm. And it's, it's not so much. I'm having a go at him calling him a flopper or anything like that. No, and I, I don't want to do that either because I, I don't know that that's what it is. I, I don't even think it's... It might be like something he doesn't even know what he's doing. Yeah, that's right? it. It's subconscious. Yeah, it, it's just it passing and dropping. It, it, it happens a lot. I don't know if he's losing balance or something not right. We, like maybe, I don't know if his legs are just... Because of all the injuries, something's not right there. But he's got to be more upright. And I, he, he's got to be he's got to be told to be more upright. I would hope that Trent Robinson is a cluey enough coach, and I think he is, to kind of identify it. It's been a couple of weeks now, and it's been happening you know, for a little while. You know, maybe it's something that they can work on at training and see if he can build up that confidence to not do that mm. exact thing. The last four now, he's done it mm. into it. So, like, And I said it with St. George one earlier. I said he was falling, yeah. and he does it a lot. He slides, he drops and slides. It happened with um, Nia Kore. Yeah. And he he really he couldn't wrap his arm around anyone. Anyway. Now that like he had Paulo there, so he couldn't wrap his arm around anyone. Anyway. And this one here, he just pretty much fell into his bicep. Mm. Like, it, what's going to happen if he falls and hits his head into the guy's chest? Yeah, right. It's the same problem. You can still get a concussion, a concussion from that, right? It's yep. just it's he's falling. Did you want to talk about Trent Robinson's press conference now or after? We'll all the do games? the press conference and what people said yep. afterwards. Right. Um. Tupanua got put in a sim bin in this game as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for the Roosters early in the game. Um, but yeah, the Roosters were too good in the end uh, for the Cowboys, who were pretty good. Valentine Holmes was looking pretty good. He's starting to find some old form, which yeah. is good. Um, Sam Walker now is putting together enough games to say that he's probably just a good half. It's not just a couple of games. I think he's done a couple of things. I suspect he has some time off soon, though. He's looking busted. Might need a rest, yeah. No, no, he's looking busted. Yeah. Like, he's got shoulder problems, foot problems. He's got... You, you. I watched him run at halftime and he could barely move. So Their problem is that they're quite light on already and they're already, you know, they're playing land. Yeah, but they could play Kieran in there for a game and he, mm. he used to be a 5'8 in the Warriors. So yeah. You, you can play Lamb at half for a game and give him a couple of games rest and bring him back again. Like he's gonna get a bit of rest over the international period anyway, like this rep period. So mm. I think the Roosters have round thirteen off, and then the gap between round fifteen and sixteen is off. So maybe they'll give him a couple of weeks in there, and they're pretty safe at the moment. The Roosters. They got the Broncos this week. It might be a game for him to give yeah. him off as well. Yeah. Um, the Warriors. The only game this one. The only game it didn't have a sin bin or a send off. Yeah. Um and. Part, like only a couple of reports too. Um, Eels 34, Warriors 18. Uh, Parramatta 
flew out of the gate to a 24 nil lead. The Warriors uh, fought back. I think it got it to 28-18 at one point, and then you scored late with Jake Arthur in his first game. I listened to most of this game on ABC Grandstand. I was driving home from work. Um, RCG scored a couple of tries in oh, this. Fantastic. <laughs> the second, The second one probably ran for about 50 metres, he's telling everyone now. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll only grow, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when when Campbell Gillard scored, I've gone, oh, RCG. And uh, Mrs. Pyers next to me goes, who calls him that? I said, everyone. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Old Mo Man. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, good win. And um, pretty touching moment when Arthur scored and, and Brad Arthur, was, they show, you know, cut to Brad Arthur up in the box and showing a little bit of emotion with the boys. Yeah, what so. at the press conference, though? Gets there and goes... Oh, you showed a bit of emotion. Yeah, it's because we iced the game. <laughs> we had three. We had three attempts to ice the game and didn't do it. So I was happy we iced the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the good thing about the Jake after one I was reading today, the players really push for him to get picked. Yeah. So, um, apparently he spoke to his wife. His wife didn't want him to name him. And and then obviously I think believe that uh, Clint Gufferson coming to his office and said no, he needs to be picked and. And then she said something on the lines of, well, if Clint Gufferson's girlfriend can be picked, he can be picked. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> Brad said, oh, Clint, come into my office and whatever. And he said, well, and, and his wife turned around and said, well, if Clint Gufferson's girlfriend can be picked, he can be picked in the side. Because <laughs> she wasn't sure he was ready for it. Um, well, good on good on the players for speaking up. And, they would see him at then, every day at training. Yeah, and, and they've he'd been with them for, for ages. Mm. Uh, thinking, thinking of which, right, just think back a few years when we had a, a, a semi-final spot on the line back in 2014 and, and remember the old ball boy gate? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Against yeah. Canterbury? Yeah, yeah, we're that's throwing the, throwing the ball to the to the mm-hmm. winger. Yes, that's yes. right. <laughs> that's our jaggy boy. Um, <laughs> all, in all seriousness, no. The Eels and the NRL taken the piss with regard to COVID-19 and the protocols and warning all the clubs, if you play, and they didn't say don't play, but they did warn them that if they played in the in the New South Wales Cup, they risked not being in the NRL bubble. And they played them anyway. And, and then they said, well, look, those players are now no longer in the NRL bubble. All the NRL players went into it, their own bubble their, their, like their virtual bubble where they didn't go anywhere, they couldn't go to the shops or anything like that. And to my eye, him playing in that game in the New South Wales Cup and then living with Brad Arthur took Brad Arthur out of the NRL bubble rather than put Jake Arthur into the NRL bubble. Now, let's get this right. It wasn't the NRL bubble. It was the Sydney NRL, the, the, the Sydney Sydney, NRL Sydney bubble. Sydney clubs, yes. Of course, right. Mel- Melbourne players were still wherever. And I, I but- argue with you, though, playing against a team based in in where the alleged um, case was, was the biggest hypocritical thing. That actually exposes everyone. What are you talking about? So, the fact they played Roosters and... and um, Who's their feeder club? Norths? Yeah. The fact they played them... When there are things in the area, makes there's no sense. Like, but there was one case. Well, there was. And they all tested negative. It's not going to make a lick of difference. What, what's it make a lick of difference for a player going to the shops to get no, some bread? I understand that. It I makes no that. difference. But, but the Swans coaches, like, Swans coaches were at the same cafe as this guy. Now, I don't know. This guy's been vaccinated. Who knows what the story is there? But the, this, the man and his wife went to a cafe. The man went to a barbecue shops and all that. So there was a chance that there was going to be COVID out in the in the community. There was, we don't know, you know, there's you know incubation periods. You don't know how far the spread has gone. The NRL warned them, look, for the sake of if you want them to go to Queensland, because in the, at the end of the day, the Queensland, you know, health minister and the Queensland um, premier say who can come into the state. And if the NRL players have been playing outside the bubble and then they say, no, we only want people from the NRL bubble to come to Queensland, there was a chance that the players who played New South Wales Cup beforehand and weren't in the NRL bubble may not have been allowed to go. And if Jake Arthur wasn't allowed to go because he played against people outside the NRL bubble, what puts Brad Arthur in the NRL bubble if he's been living with a bloke who was outside it? That's my question. And good COVID management may have had Brad Arthur out rather than Jake Arthur in. Can I ask you a question then? Yes. How would Jake Arthur 
be living with Brad Arthur be any different to any one of them players going home to their girlfriends or wives? Because all those... They're outside the bubble. No, because all of those people have to be in the bubble. That's part of it. That When they create bubbles, that's all part of it. They're outside the bubble to start with. That's what I'm talking about. They, they, they don't get there and create a bubble and then turn around to the, to the wives and go, no, you are now isolated to this house. That's how right? that's how bubbles work. No, no, but they don't do that, right? The players, it's the players they keep in their sort of rut that mm. would make a league of difference. Like they, they, these people have got lives too. They can't. The NRL rule doesn't dictate what these partners do. No, they they can't be told. Oh, you can't go and teach at school if you're a school teacher because you're in a bubble now. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't happen. So that's look, what I'm saying. The bubble's fastful because it didn't exist. And that's why they never put it in a hard line in saying, you play them, you don't get them. I'm just saying they, they were playing with fire. They were just playing with fire. No, take the risk and call their bluff. In any case, he played great. And he didn't train hmm. with the team until he got into Brisbane yeah. because they had no bubble, hmm. which makes no sense. Um, And you know what, but there was a couple of defensive flaws I was a bit worried about from Parramatta, but... Hopefully they fix it up before Turbo tears in the shreds this week. Um, when Nia Kore is back, does he come straight back into centre? Because it's clearly a problem. At cent- that right centre spot with Wanga Blake is clearly a problem. And when Nia Kore was there, there wasn't the same problems. I, I would argue, I would argue that I don't know. Look, you can, you can give him this week and probably this week coming. Because you've got Jake Arthur there in that spot too. Mm. Right? So, a new, new like, you got a new half where they're not quite sure how he's going to go. He's only played eight games against men. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I can argue, I can allow it, but, yeah, they want to get better quickly. Yeah, but they do. Um, but Niyakura has all the signs of having a lot of time on the sideline with the new rules. Um, next game, Storm 44, Dragons 18. Now, Dragons were brave in this game. Dufty was brave in this game. Mm-hmm. He was the one doing everything for the Dragons. Um, Maguire looking at a long stint on the sidelines, seven to ten weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, Ravalara come back from, from a two-week suspension only to get suspended for the exactly the same thing. Yep. Um, got a massive technical flaw going there. Um, the high, the send off. Now, oh look, Hammer Hammer had a whinge on on Facebook about oh happy for teams to be eleven on thirteen. Don't commit. No, that was dumb acts. That was a that was a clear send off. They had six games of evidence already. If you come around with a swinging arm and Hit get a get head. a bloke in the in the jaw, first point of contact, you're gonna go. Yeah, that and, they had six that games dumb. of evidence. It was dumb. Yeah, it was dumb at the highest level. And and then Maguire's was a, 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 sin, a sin bin as well, hmm. right? So, and then he got done again for a hip toss later in the game. So he's, yeah, he's looking at seven weeks. Um, but yeah, Storm too good. Dufty was on fire. They had it was fourteen ten at one point. The Dragons were going all right. Dragons had twelve players kept finding overlaps. Yeah, I couldn't believe how how much space they had with the ball in hand yeah. against the Storm who are a good defensive side, always. Mm. And, yeah, the fact that they had space on the outside, I, I well done to whoever's running that Dragons attack. Oh, I think there was a bit of a thing going on there, like Addo Carr and Ravalawa are like, just say, you had three, I'll have three. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, that was... Look, Storm got away with against Storm, very good second half. Storm have been at halftime nearly level pegging with many lots of teams, and the second half just blow them out of the water. Mm-hmm. Paramount's a bit the same. Nico Hines, a lot of talk about him. Very good. You know, he's five try assists in this game. He's not a backup anymore. Like, just well, what, do you, what do you do? Well, yeah, look, he's looking for a home. Yeah. But do you, Michael Innes was saying the other night, or oh, how about, like, he thinks he stays at Mel- he should stay at Melbourne. Another year or two, try and get the premiership because he didn't, didn't play, obviously play in last year's mm. one. Get the premiership, get some experience, then go off and. I I he think he's ready. I think he'll win a ring this year. 
I don't know. He'd be my 14 in that side in a grand final. He can come on anywhere and play anywhere. I, I, I don't think the Storm are as, as great as everyone thinks. They let 12 players get around them. That's not a good sign. Yeah, they didn't have everyone this week either. Yeah, that's true. But do you reckon Munster... Like you talk about like deplete, you're talking about depleted. They're as depleted as anyone. What, Munster, Grant. Harry Grant? Munster and Grant are probably the two best players in the league, apart from Cleary. Like, mm. two of the best three players in the league, not in the team, and they, they pumped the Dragons. Give it a track, I understand the Dragons had 11 and 12 for most of the game, but it doesn't matter. Like Everyone has players out. That's the thing. Talk about, yeah, everyone's got players out. They've got two of the best three players in the game out. Yeah. They're still pumping people. Those two come back. They, they'll they wipe everyone. No. Nah. I've got no I, no drama saying that. Look, I, 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 no, I, I just think there's a couple of weaknesses in that Melbourne team and they've been exposed a couple of times this year, especially around the ruck. They are... And I reckon if you get on, top yeah, but that was that was when Brandon Smith was starting at hooker. No, no, I get that. But Grant hasn't started yet. Yeah, but Grant Grant won't have the engine at the moment. He's, yeah. he's off. Like in the grand finals, not until October. Yeah, but he's got to <laughs> he's got to make it there. He hasn't spent that much time on the field. He keeps getting injured. Yeah, <laughs> he's got Origin to get through too, which is not so great. He has to come back very soon because I don't know if he. We don't, don't want he, we don't want Reed Marnie going. I would love Reed Marnie to get in that <laughs> camp. I don't care. All we these haven't people, got any hookers. All these people who don't want players to go to Origin get stuffed. The amount of <laughs> no, 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 I hear what you're saying. The amount it, of experience, experience you get from going in, yeah, going no, in that I camp. I agree. Like the probably optimum thing would be that he goes in there as 18th man, doesn't play a game, but gets to be around everyone in the Queensland camp but for the, a week. I, I honestly think, I honestly think he gets picked for Queensland. Not, not as a starter, Marnie. Yeah, maybe, maybe even as a starter, mm. and they may not think. Grant can go the 80 minutes because he hasn't played an 80-minute game yet, I don't think, Grant. No. I mean, so, if Bellamy doesn't think he can go 80 minutes, how's he going to do that in Origin? So, like, oh, I I'm, I reckon they may even pick him to start him and bring Grant off the bench and yeah. and just give him, like, yeah. And, like, Reed Marnie can sort of drop into lot. He gets, in, gets his hands on everything and does everything anyway. So, mm. But he, um, yeah, that's what I can see happening. But Well, Grant was the second best player in Origin 3 last year and he played, what, half the game? Yeah. Yeah, so... Looking good, and the last game. Well, it was it was now, looking, talking about looking good. <laughs> Panthers forty eight, Titans twelve. Um, look again. Somehow a team with less players on the field somehow managed to score, but I think Panthers took the. Oh, they uh, had the foot off the, the rack. Yeah, but so this game was six all six uh, six nil right, and then the Titans scored as, as a try for all money. And Nathan Cleary, the Academy Award goes to you. That was the biggest dive I've ever seen. Oh, it's one for one. Proctor did yeah, but that was thing. later in the game. No, Proctor did it first. It happened first for Proctor. Proctor did it first. And Before two, Cleary. Yeah, and then five mm. minutes later, Cleary did it. Yeah. it was Both it, of them. Was, yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting one in this one. Uh, Liam Martin uh, put on a report for a forearm to the head. With the ball. With the, the ball, yeah. which led to a pretty decent try, mm. um, which which I was pumped for because my super coach uh, had all my super coach fingerprints all over Dylan Edwards, <laughs> Cleary, kick out scoring. Oh, I was like, ah, oh, don't take it off him. Someone's put some, um, uh, I, I don't know who it was, but they put some freeze frames up of that and it was first point of contact, chest, and then yeah. sort of rose up. You, yeah. was it, were you okay with the penalty there? or 100%. Show okay. me in the rule book where it said you can fend with your forearm. Yeah, okay. You I mean, mean that's how people... Your fist. People... Your fist. You in your, hand, your palm. Yeah. That's, your pa- that's why it's called a palm off, mm. not a forearm off. This, 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 that's one of the rules they turned their eye on, like they turned their back on. You don't... You don't. You can block... You can bring your arm up and protect yourself. You can't palm with it. Mm. You can't palm with a forearm. Yeah, fair enough. It's That's not a... It's, it's a penalty with the forearm. It should be every time someone does it, it should be a penalty. I made a kid's n- nose bleed, palming, palming him straight in the face once. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Well, we'll get to that in a sec yeah. because yeah. But they they absolutely done it easy to Panthers. Nathan Cleary show though, like he he is playing with a lot of confidence right now. Yes, yes. Nathan Cleary show indeed, and we'll get into a little bit of that soon when it gets the super coach because one person come from and the clouds. <laughs> We're going to hear from our friend this week. No, I'm not going to hear from me. I think he's in hiding. <laughs> um, so later after the magic round, which was very magical, Panthers still undefeated, twenty points. Eels uh, nine and one on eighteen points. Storm eight and two of sixteen. Rabbits 
on in the fourth, eight and two sixteen. Roosters on fourteen. A gap now again is now back to four points. Dragons on ten. Seagulls ten. Seagulls sneaking along. Now no one outside the top five has a positive for and against. Yep. Um, Raiders. Yep. Uh, now how do you how do you feel about how, how do you feel about the Raiders? the Titans, the Warriors, Knights, and Cowboys, all being four and six and equal, like technically equal eighth. And one of one of those teams will make the finals. Yeah. We have at the moment, a negative, mm. um, a negative win ratio. Yep. <laughs> Not very good. Not and then finishes with Sharks, Broncos, and Bulldogs. Bulldogs are on two, Sharks, Broncos, four. Um, so there's a clear top five. Panthers, Eels, Storm, Rabbitohs, Roosters. Clear top five. The, the lowest... Four and against for all of those is the Rabbitohs plus seventy one, and they had fifty put on. So apart from that, they they'd all be over a hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, the Dragons are at minus two, and the Seagulls are at minus thirteen. And I think both of those teams are pretty good. I think both yeah. of those teams are, are pretty good. Not good, good, but they're pretty good right now. Right now, they're better than the rest. Yeah, I I think you could almost lock in the six seven final as the Dragons and Seagulls, and probably the Seagulls hosting it because they've been pretty good with Turbo, Turbo back. Oh, I don't know about locking in the Dragons just yet. <laughs> they they got a few weeks now. They lost Dufty. That's a massive loss for them. They got Maguire gone. They have got Ravalawa out. They got they got um, Fumano out. They got about they've been decimated. Who of any of those teams below them that you just mentioned? Raiders, Titans, Warriors, Knights, Cowboys. Who of any of them have been good enough to go past the Dragons? I, I could see easily the Knights and the Warriors, and possibly the Titans. I could argue all of them. I, I don't think. I don't think that the. I don't think the Dragons are that much better than the Knights and the Warriors. You get Mitchell Pierce back. You get Ponga back. You get the players back into the Warriors side. They're going to be flying. Oh, sorry, the Knights side. They're flying. The Warriors are not an exceptional team. They are. They are just a. a brave sort of team. It's going to be a real nuisance factor to certain clubs and certainly the clubs who aren't the top five. They're going to be a real nuisance to them teams. Like They, they took Manly to 36-32 or something last week. Like they, they took it to Manly and took mm. it to the limit. So the Warriors, I can see at some point, stringing a couple of games together. The Titans, once they get their stuff together, they'll, they'll turn on, they'll turn on a, a little bit and get a couple of results. The Raiders, I can't see. The Raiders, I can't. I can't believe they're eighth. I'm stunned they're eighth. <laughs> right? I can't believe it. There, they're there purely there because the Titans got thumped by Panthers. Otherwise, they're outside the eight. So, look, the it's a lottery. But like, look at the West Tigers. How do you think the West Tigers have gone this year? The West Tigers are technically one win from the eight. Yeah. Right. So, anywhere, anyone between six to thirteen. Anyone between six and thirteen, any one of them teams to get it. It's just a matter of who gets a run and when. I feel fairly confident about the Seagulls and the Dragons. Seagulls more than the others. Oh, I just don't. I don't feel the Dragons, especially now they've got so many out. They could. They could go. You got to look at the Dragons. The Dragons won what? They won one of their last since round five. So one of the last six or one of the last five, whatever. So it's not great for them. They've hit the wall. Yeah. Um, tip and comp. I ain't done a few here. So I'll tell you one th- one result in the tipping comp. You guys, you guys. Oh, it's a pretty easy eight from eight this week. Hammer, Hammer was very bullish about the eight from he eight. He was, wasn't he? Oh, I was. I did toss up the the first game. I wasn't sure nights or. You were out in the. You were out at eight o'clock yeah. on Friday night. Yeah. I did toss <laughs> up that one though. I wasn't sure who to tip that one because you just don't know with the Tigers what teams coming out. I was a lot keener on the Tigers than you guys were. That's for sure. Uh, my only one wrong this week: the Warriors. I took the Warriors to beat the Eels. Well, that's so it cost a me a, about you, don't it? cost me a perfect round, yeah. So, anyway. Um, do you want to know who's winning the Bats and Balls tipping comp? There was a few people... Panther who, Dave was on top. Oh, they won this few week. few people this, got perfect rounds this week. Five people got tens. Oh, you've got the results there? Yeah, Panther, Panther D. I assume it was Panther, Panther Dave. Panther Dave, yep. Lobby, Lobby, Lobby Tadoosh, Tadoosh uh, Big Mendy, and Macca. Yep, and then the leaderboard, Tadoosh is on top with Big Mendy on 64 and 19 tequilas. Yeah, the three Allison, of them. all hanging so, there, and um, the Magic Eel sixty one. It's a big Mendy Rabbito sandwich with a couple of eels. So mm. it's, um, Tudush is the guy that sits next to me at the footy. Oh right, so yeah. it's so it's um yeah three eels in the top four and a Rabbito. Mm-hmm. Says a lot. 
Just keep picking Paro, everyone. You'll be laughing. Yep. Uh, games this week, and then we'll talk about what we <laughs> some of the stuff that went on. All right, let's end the tips. Okay. First game, Cowboys versus Knights. I'll go the Cowboys by six. Knights don't get anyone any of their key guys back yet, do they? I don't believe so, no. Um, they may get Ponga. I don't know what Ponga did. Um, obviously, we, we haven't got the team list yet. So No, we're recording on a Monday night, just yeah. to remind you all. So the, these tips may change, but currently North Queensland for me. Yeah, I'll go North Queensland at home. Valentine Holmes looked pretty good last week. Um, Warriors and West Tigers. Yeah, I'll go Warriors. Uh, I do I do believe you when you say that the Warriors have a proper go. And yeah, uh, I'll take the Warriors in that game. At 24 nil down, they could have shut up shop and just said, let a Paramount get the 48 nil. Mm. They had a real crack and tried to fight their way in. Reese Walsh, man, he's got some good moves <laughs> when he steps. And, and um, uh, Tavita Harris looked pretty good yep. with Toe Harris on the side as well. So I'm going to the Warriors over the Tigers. Um, Sharks and Dragons. Don't often talk about odds in this, but the Sharks are favourite in this game. I've seen nothing from the Sharks. It's to, purely, purely because the Dragons, because the dragons are decimated. Are missing so many players, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Hunt and Norman are still there. Yep. Dufty. Dufty's out. Dufty's gone. Yeah. Mm. Dufty's Shit. a massive loss. He is. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm still going to take the Dragons. I'm going to take the other side. I'm going to take the Sharks. I just, I don't see anything, anything at all from, from the Dragons in this game. Dufty created absolutely everything for them. Uh, I don't know how they, at the, I don't know how they're going to set their lineup. Um, like yeah, it's it's a pretty big, pretty big thing with Ravalawa not on the wing as well. Um, it's pretty big outs, and they got they're gonna have a pretty new look team. So I'm gonna go the Sharks in that one, and I'll give you a tip. That's a pretty ordinary Friday night game, and why <laughs> is it so late? What eight o'clock? Oh, Do you no. know how twenty four hours work? Huh. No, on this, our time. no, I'm going off Google, the Google thing and it says 8.55. I'm like, why is it 9 o'clock? <laughs> I don't even know how that works. I, I, I think something's gone wrong there because I got the earlier game at 7 o'clock, which is at 6 o'clock. Yeah, maybe maybe it thinks your internet's in Adelaide. Yeah, maybe. That's not that's only half an hour, but it's not an hour. No, yeah, I don't know what's going don't on. don't know how you there. work that out. Yeah, well, there you go. Maybe uh, you need to fix your clock on your um on your computers that still think it's um daylight no, saving time. No, no, the clock's right. Hmm. Um... Okay, so dra- tight- I'm going to go Sharks. Titans, Bulldogs. Uh, Gold Coast for mine. <laughs> yeah, they'll have to win that one, surely. Uh, Roosters, Broncos. You would think the Roosters, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, interesting. Um, do they rest Walsh? Don't know. But, yeah, look, they should still have too much firepower for the Broncos. Walker. Walker, yeah. 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 What uh, did I say? Walsh. No, Walker. Walsh, yes. Walsh. Uh, Roosters. Uh, Warriors. Hmm. Um, I'm going to go to Roosters. I, <laughs> like, look, Tedesco might just score more points than the Broncos himself. Um, Raiders Storm. The eighth placed Canberra Raiders. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, Melbourne for mine. I can't. The Raiders normally lift for the Storm. I don't know what it is. They just seem to lift. They won't lift enough. The Storm by plenty. Um, Ru- Rabbitohs and Panthers. No, this is Dubbo, isn't it? Is it Dubbo? It's out yeah. that way somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Uh Penrith are play, geez, they're playing with confidence. Latrell back for Rabbits. Mm. So you'll probably find Walker and Reynolds in the half. Benji coming off the bench again. Mm. They play best that way, but yeah. uh, just uh, Penrith are playing with so much confidence. I'm going to take Penrith. I'll take the Panthers too. Panthers are going to uh, bet in line at the moment, see when they finally lose a game. Mm. And I think this game was the shortest one, I believe. And the next one, probably Parramatta in a few weeks. Um, but. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go to Panthers as well. And the last game of the round, which is going to be a belter, probably the game of the round, Eels versus Seagulls. Absolute belter, and I don't know if I'll get there. Still working out logistics. I'm going to the Giants game against West Coast. Oh, right. So it is the early game on the mm-hmm. Sunday. So, yeah, working out if I'm going to go or if I'm just going to stay at the Giants and let someone else go to the Eels Manly game. So, yeah, haven't decided that yet. Hopefully, if the Giants can put away the West Coast in the first half, I might duck out early and get down to Bankwest. I'll give you a tip. If we're, if Giants are going to put away West Coast, it'll be around the third quarter because that's when we turn off. Mm. 
Uh, which Subway staples got more bites? Spicy mayo oh, or I'm jalapenos? I'm tipping the eels. I'll take the eels. Yeah, I'm going the eels too. Yeah, I'll take the eels. Um, which Subway staple has got more bites? Spicy mayo or jalapenos? Must admit, I don't get the spicy mayo, on my, but I do get jalapenos all the time, so I'll take jalapenos. Good choice. That's it. Um, oh, sorry. Not roosters. I'm on that one. Um, NRL. Finished. No, no. Now, all right. That was the NRL round. Now, yeah. the, the, the fallout. <laughs> so, yeah, the fallout of what happened on the weekend. <laughs> so, part one. So I'm going to go through a few people. So you can start with Robbo. What did Robbo say? Robbo, um, he was talking about, and I only sort of caught it the next morning on Channel 9 Breakfast, mm-hmm. and they showed the highlights of it and was talking about how they might have gone too far. Yep. Robbo, the week before, was complaining about the fact that he lost a player for concussion protocol, but and and the parent, or the, 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 no, well, it was Hutchison, that lost Hutchison with the broken ribs, but the fact that Dylan Brown was only placed on report at the end of half time and they couldn't muck around with their changes or whatever they were going to do, probably get a free interchange or whatever they wanted to do. Um, so he he was very vocal about the application of all the stuff in the Parramatta game and then basically called him incompetent and then came out and said they didn't go, like, they probably went too far in this game. Like, what do you want? What do you want him to do? Do you want him to police high, high shots and foul play, or do you not want him to police foul play? That's kind of uh, funny because he's on the commission, right? So yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. To his defense, he said that they're just going to get the balance right. I don't think there is any balance. They've got to go hard, right? Now, what they've got to back it up with. So it's like it's like it's uh, it's a bit like the government coming out and going, "We're going to be hard on drink driving," but then. You get charged for drink driving and then it gets to the courts and you get a slap on the wrist. That mm. doesn't work. If you're going to be hard, you need to be hard with the result as well. For sure. To, as a deterrent. Yes. Now, if that means a Tedesco coat hanging someone and he gets sent off and he's off for eight weeks, too bad. Too mm. bad. Yep. Right? You don't get you don't get away. You don't have your best player who brings someone in on the ground knocked out because it's Tedesco. Who doesn't matter who you are. You're right. trying. You're trying to change the way things happen on the field. Correct. Now, talk a little bit about AFL on this show. The AFL brought in the men on the mark rule. Now it's completely different to hitting blokes in the head, yep. but it's the same principle. Of course, the umpires were hard in those first trial games. Were hard on you. Take a step off the mark once you're standing, and they call stand. You take a step off that mark. It's fifty meter penalty, mm-hmm. and that public outcry that first week in the trials was amazing. Everyone was against it. Oh, this is going to ruin the game. Now, it's the best rule in 20 years, and everyone loves it, and it's opened the game up. And you know what it was? The umpires were hard on that first weekend, and the next weekend, there was barely any 50s, and now you don't even see one. The only time you see it now is when players accidentally run through because they're trying to follow their their man. Yep. The man sidesteps the other way around the, around the mark, and they go the other way, and, and then they get done. They're not, they're not following their guy. That's the only time you see it now. Yeah. But the man on the mark... Has has stood still since round one because yeah. the umpires hit him hard in that first week of trials, and now it's not even a thing anymore. It's a three week theory, right? Mm. First week, everyone blows up about it. Week two, coaches start cotton on, going, "Well, hang on, we need to get this right." Week three, it's normally pretty good. Yeah, right. And if they start, if they go, if they soften off straight away, I don't think they do soften off. But if they do soften off straight away, then it's just going to go back to the old days. Of course. But you, you gotta be hard with him. Now so that with what he said, he did come mm. around and say, look, they'll get it they gotta find a balance. Mm. Ricky Stewart <laughs> This guy, he gets fired up, right? He come out and pretty much said, We play a unique game, it's not for everyone, yada yada yada. If if you don't um if you want if you don't want the the, the I can't remember the word he said, let me know because I'll go and chain I'll I'll go and get the right players. Mm. Well, hang on. So you telling me you got players that do head eye tackles? Guys, is that what you're yeah, recruiting? Yeah, I've, I've recruited guys that hit blokes in the head, and and now I've got to change my recruiting style. Like that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard anyone he say. Said, he said something about we might as well play netball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. plenty of injuries in netball. Well, they, that's probably the worst for like knee injuries and stuff mm. like that because just the propping and yeah, like yeah. And I've seen some pretty good elbows in netball. Elbows and scratches—they don't yeah. muck around either. Yeah, that's just not in the head. Yeah. Um. 
that was a pretty stupid comment by him. Hmm. Todd Payton, one of the, oh, I feel sorry for the fans. I feel sorry for this. I feel like oh, it should go back to the way it was. I, a stupid comments. Wayne Bennett, I kind of agree with. He wasn't happy with, obviously, the play getting brought back. Uh, he thought that wasn't the best. And if that's the only thing you got an issue with. Now, the problem with him, right? The problem with him, Volandis apparently spoke to him on on uh, Saturday morning just to make sure, like, am I, are we going the right way about this? And he said, yeah, you know, you're going the right way because he's been pretty big push for it. Mm. But he also came out and said Latrell Mitchell didn't hit now for him that hard. <laughs> so, like, come on. It's one yeah. thing defending your player. Right? You, like, call him a numbskull. Like, yeah. and they don't hit someone in the head. So, they, that's, you got to look at it from what it is. The one that really irked me with absolute passion was Gordon Tallis. Yeah. Right? And this one really got to me. And all these people on Twitter going, oh, yes, he he's a plumber that knows the game. He's played the game. He's a front row forward or second rower. Forwards have no brains to start with. Mm. Right? That, besides the point, is he kept getting there and they spoke to um, Graham Annesley on Saturday and he kept sitting there and going, oh, we're not under, like, like, you can't compare our game to under 12's games. You can't do it. Rah, 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 rah. I'll give you a tip. Gordon Tallis may not compare NRL to under 12 games, but I'll give you a tip who does. Yeah, the under mother- 12's. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because the amount of times when I was refereeing junior league football, you turn around and you penalise a kid for a shoulder charge or whatever, mm. and at first they turn around and go, but Sonny Bill Williams did that last night. Or Sam Burgess did that last night. Why can't I? Mm. Right? That's the first thing they used to say to you. They understand it. So you, you can get there and go, oh, we're not this, we're not that, we can't do this. You can. Right? Now. And this- also, the, the the argument that mothers watch the game and they don't want their kids playing that game, and there's a lot of people that push back on that and say, what mothers don't want their kids to play rugby league because of what happens on Friday night? There's a thousand mothers that don't want their kids playing rugby league because of what they see on the on the TV. Hundred percent. That happens all the time. Hundred yeah. percent. Right. But the other part to this, right? And 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 then I watched a couple of episodes last night because I really got into it and I was watching Twitter and I was watching everything because for me this is what I've been calling out for on this show for for years. Mm. Right. Now we've been calling like we've been calling out for this since 2015. Referee the rules. Show, Referee right? the rules. Don't right. hit blokes in the head. Right, 100. percent Right. Yes. So we've been calling it for years. For people to come out and say Michael Innes, main offender, this is a new rule. It is not a new rule. This rule has always <laughs> been there. Yeah, you can't hit right? blokes in the head. <laughs> now, the average age for an NRL player probably going into the 20s, right? Mm. But there's a whole batch of kids who are between 18 and 22. Jake Arthur, let's use him as an example. Mm. He's coming in playing in this. Three years ago, he would have been playing under 15s under safe play code. Which, what's the safe play code? You can't tackle above the armpits. Yeah. So you can't tell me his tackling technique is for hit the head. It's three years ago. He's 90% of his footballing career has been played under a safe play code where he has to tackle under the armpits. Yeah, it's only when they get into the NRL system they change the way they play because they don't want to muffle in the ball. Correct, hmm. right? But the thing is, you don't have to hit him in the head to stop that. You can hit him armpits anyway. Yeah. It's still going to stop the ball being offloaded. Now, and that's where it really irked me because the people are going, oh, you've got to... James Graham sitting on there going, oh, um, you've got to give him time to change your tackling technique. What, are you training to hit people in the head? Exactly. Yeah. How hard is it? You lower yourself by an inch, you don't hit that person's neck. It's not hard. <laughs> like, I played, not in a rule, hmm. but I played the game, like, you don't hit guys in the head. Like, I hit a few, fair few people in the head just quietly. But, like, you just don't do it. Now, yeah. I just don't want, and this is the, this is the part that really gets to me a little bit, you know, because you played cricket at the same time I did and we played in the same team. The moment, I had a lot of fire as a cricketer. A lot of fire. And I have steam coming out my ears. The day after, or the weeks after Phil Hughes dying, mm. that was the beginning of the end for me for cricket. I lost the aggression towards it. I lost a bit of something that made me me in cricket. 
Yeah, yeah. Right? No, I can hear what you're saying. Because I mean, I was never fast enough to hit anyone anyway. I wasn't towards but- <laughs> the end either. But, but I hit, I've hit a few people in the head, right? In yeah. my time, right? So that was like a massive reality check to me that I can actually do damage to that person down there. Mm. And that ruined my mental part. I don't want a situation to come in where a guy gets hit in the head and and all of a sudden someone feels responsible for that and that changes everything. Yeah. That would be bad, right? Now, someone got there and said, Greg Alexander came out and said, oh, you got to take it on what the aftermath is. You can't. You can't go, oh, he's been knocked out. What, what? So because we just wait for wait to find out how injured he is and then, then he gets sent off or not. Yes. Right, you, you can't do that because the sheer fact you can't do that is, if he gets clouted, mm. right? Like, so they're all saying, "Oh, that that um, Ruben Garrick one wouldn't have hurt him at all." A, it was this, the Tyson Gamble second one, but as I said on the Cumberland Throw at one point, you don't know what's going to knock out someone. No, you don't. What what would knock could knock out you won't knock out me. Mm. So it's just simple, black and white rule: contact with the head. Right now, the, where the gr- the grey area comes in is players falling in that. I'm happy for if a player's falling, you go okay, penalty sufficient, right? Yeah, put him on report, and then we'll review later. what his actions were later. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. You can fight yourself later on, right? Yeah. Now, if he get there and go, okay, look, no, nothing, that's fine. But if, a, if some of the ones like the ones that got sent off, now like that guy got Simbin for Tedesco. I think Symbian may be a little bit harsh for that. Yeah, because w- w- where's he meant to go? Like, he there's can't no, go anywhere. there's no if if he's falling, and especially if he falls head first, there's no actual point mm. on his body you can even tackle because there's there's nowhere to touch. Yeah, and so I, that's very hard. It's very hard to even make a tackle on him. Yeah, so I think for that one, that one, I think they got to have a bit more common sense and go. Look, he's falling. It's kind of on him. And that will make the attacking guys have the onus on them a little bit more too to mm. stay more upright. Um, what was some of the other stuff I heard? Some some of the stuff was just absolute dribble, and like the, oh, the fatigue factor is causing it. Mm. How many like uh, the fatigue factor? Cause, did Herman Sasa look like he had fatigue when he made his tackle? He was no, he was he was um was he the one that stormed out of the line and, yes. and hit Luai yes. flush flush on the chin? Uh, Toho, yeah. Uh, Toho, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right in here, yeah. 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 Papali got there calling for a, a, a knock on. Yeah. He's not fatigued, right? Don't blame fatigue for someone hitting, putting their shoulder into someone's head. It's the way they're trained. Yeah. Right? Now, the other yeah, the other part to this is um, people saying, oh, the game's gone soft. The game's gone soft. There's nothing in the rule. There's nothing in this thing saying they can't still play hard. you just got to play legal. Yeah, of course. Right? You can play legal and hard. You just can't hit guys in the head. Yeah. It's not hard. Trevor right? Gilmister never hit anyone in the head. Now, I wouldn't want to run at him. And a lot of people compare it to the 80s and old years and stuff like that, right? Now, they used to get marched when they hit blokes in the head. And the, and they're like, yeah, that, that's true, right? But they got there. And when you, I had a bit of a think about it today, right? So you look at the difference between a player now compared to a player from the 80s, right? Now, people are going, oh, it's the fatigue factor, fatigue factor. The guys in the 80s would smack th- smoke three packs of, of Winnie's Blues during the week. Yeah. Right? And they'd train on a Tuesday and Thursday and go down the pub after training. Yeah, yeah. and have probably a road run was their fitness. Like, none yeah. of this preseason, like, running up sand dunes and stuff like that. Yeah. Right? So, you reckon they weren't fatigued? Yeah, playing exactly. Playing the game for 80 minutes when they smoke three packs of Winnie Blues a day? Yeah. Like, come on. Like, they, they, you got to look at it. There was fatigue back then, and if they made a mistake, they paid for it. Hmm. It's no different now. It's not ruining the game. It's this fatigue stuff, they're more trained than ever before. You know what the other difference is? And I'd and I love to ask the NRL physio if, it's, if it made any difference. But do you remember back in the late, especially in the late 80s, early 90s, hmm. everyone was wearing shoulder pads? Yep. No one wears shoulder pads now. Yeah. Right? No, true. So you've got more um, bone on bone contact. You know what they wear now? They wear that they wear like the tight fitting undershirts as yeah. well. So I wonder if that wonder if they decided well the the actual contact like the shoulder pads don't really affect much contact. So we just get rid of the shoulder pads but we'll put these tight fitting mm. shirts on you 
to keep everything in place. Mm. I think they actually, I think that would stop stop more injuries than than do anything else. I think the, the NRL physio has come out mm. about the jerseys mm. and said there's there's less dislocated fingers. Yep. But more torn pecs because yeah, okay. of the jerseys, right? Well, because go. because it's got no give. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the jersey, so when they just throw their arm out, it's just bang gone. Mm. Whereas you're not getting your fingers caught in the jerseys anymore. Where do I see a dislocated finger? Oh, you saw weekend? a few on the weekend. Um, Tex Hoy, had yeah, one. that's right. And then and, I did a second time. Was that the same? Was that Tex Hoy? Yeah, yeah. Happened a second time, and then uh, yeah, uh, four and broke his hand. Ah, uh, Foran was the one I was thinking of because they thought they were going to put his finger back in, mm. and then he's, they're like, "Oh no, that's broken." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Foran was the one I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, they thought they thought I oh, will put his finger back in, and then I think he played on for a minute. Yeah, he did. He played on for a little bit, and yeah. then it wasn't, <laughs> no, it no, wasn't coming good. It's not, it's not the dislocated finger; it's the broken hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't wasn't coming good, and then yeah, no, the bail. Yeah. Um, very quickly, Super Coach, do you have anything else to say about the? Crackdown, I've got no problem with it. Myself. No, uh, look, don't hit guys in the head. Or you saw them Warriors Eagles game. Don't hit guys in the head, you won't go. Uh, bats and Balls Cup. Now, I'm not going to worry about the mug. I'm just going to fly through the cup. For I'm not interested in Supercoach this year. <laughs> you got 984 <laughs> points. You got beaten by a guy that got 1,424. But can I tell you something? Mm. You weren't the lowest score of the round. So you got beaten by checkup, right? Yeah. The lowest score of the round belonged to... The DWS Flesh Puppets. Really? Oh, Nine- we, 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 I must have a gun side then, because I know you've talked about his gun side before. 904 points. You know who I brought in the last couple of weeks? I've brought in David Fafita, not even playing at the moment, mm. and Brian uh, To'o, mm. who scored terribly, and I made him my captain this week. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, coming into the last round now, so I was playing the Flesh Puppets, as you would have heard last week, he gave me a bit of a razzing and how he's going to pump me and do everything, everything mm. else, right? Coming into the last round now... For the, for the listeners, I haven't really mentioned it too much, but I've been getting beaten coming into the last round and either updates got me over the line or the last game have got me over the line for the last four <laughs> weeks. right? So coming into the last game the other night, I was getting beaten by 122 points from the Flesh Puppets. He had Jerome Luai as captain, yep. um, Tino and um, Peachy. Yep. I had Cleary as captain, um <laughs> Dylan Edwards, Kick Out, and Charlie Staines. Yeah. He had a 120 point lead. So coming into it on predictor scores, I was losing. Yep. A 400 point flogging later. <laughs> and NRL Supercoach record. Yeah, from, from Nathan Cleary. And if scored, that try wasn't taken away from him, even more. Oh, like, it would have been more. Yeah. And, and then I would have Kick Out scoring as well. Mm. And oh, it was all happening. Dylan Edwards, great. Yeah, it was great. I ate twelve seventy seven. He got nine hundred and four. But some of the big scores: Yokohama is fifteen ninety nine. Yeah, big score. Yeah. Right? Now the top score is like seventeen oh two or something. So yeah. he pretty up there. Hunter got fourteen uh, fourteen forty four and defeated She Carnage with thirteen seventy one. Mm. As if we got a third round and lose. Um, uh, Rose Creek Dragon thirteen eight defeated Killing Seal thirteen twenty four. Pretty big score. The Culminators is coming, coming last all year. Fourteen ninety seven. Oh. <laughs> they got a win. Uh, it's yeah, fourteen forty seven for uh, Mendy as well. Big Mendy, fourteen forty seven, and Ropes Creek Raiders fourteen hundred. Oh, a few big scores in this one, and you got a measly nine hundred points. I made the mistake of going Shustar to Gamble, which I think a lot of people did this week. I I went. Uh, I played a bit of silly buggers with the old flesh puppets and held me trades up my sleeve. Mm. I went, um, ended up going Simpkins to Gamble, which, look, it was a gamble and I didn't mm. really care. Gamble will still play uh, uh, round 13, which is handy. And I sat on David Fafita and then I went, mm, he's got a break in even 150 next game. Then he's got... Or- so Origin as well. Origin. Yeah. I think you won't do as much over Origin. I'll get him back at a discounted price. So I got him out and brought Ryan Madison in. Yeah, and uh, Matto scored a try. Took took the money, mm. took the money and run. Uh, but yeah, that was a bit of super coach AFL. Josh, uh, AFL. <clears throat> Let me find the scores. Now I didn't see a lot of these games, but I did see a few. Um, first game, St Kilda. How my eyes? I've got my contact lenses in, so it's a bit hard to read. Do you want me to read them? Yeah. Six is it six seventeen or eight seventeen? Five five seventeen forty seven. Oh my eyes! And Geelong eight uh, ten eight sixty eight. 
That 17 included uh, countless sitters. Dead set. St. Kilda should have flogged them. They they moved the ball better than them. They, like Max King, I think he kicked one goal five. And absolute sitters in front. Like, uh, he's meant to be their, their spearhead. He's the guy that's going to, like, take them to the promised land. And he's getting the marks and not kicking straight. And yeah. all of them. Like, what was it, 5-17? Yeah, 5-17. Yeah, just not good enough. And um, Chris Scott even came out and said in the press conference, it's probably one that we got away with because St. Kilda across the park were better than him and they just didn't kick straight. And he said he basically said that. They'll be in their rooms, you know, ruined bad kicking. And <laughs> good on him for saying it. Like, oh, it's it, true. Yeah. And he'll probably go to training and flog him this week because apart from, like, St. Kilda's bad kicking, they were beaten all over the park. Now, it is part of the game. And St Kilda weren't as good at kicking goals as Geelong were, but apart from that, like St Kilda, this is one that really they'll they'll ruin the end. Yeah, and uh, Geelong got one that they probably shouldn't have. But um, yeah, apart from that, look, I don't know. It was good to see Close going well with his long sleeves. I, lo- I love a long sleeve in um in the do. AFL. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well done Geelong. Uh, but yeah, Sydney. 10 12 72 Collingwood 5 12 42 uh Collingwood led early in this game mm-hmm. I didn't see much of it but, oh, uh, I saw a fair bit of this game yeah um yeah the Collingwood were going all right Sydney sort of a bit slow out of the gates and then um started closing the gap and for a while they Collingwood couldn't couldn't score a point mm-hmm. and the Swans just the Swans like Heaney was very good he was everywhere and um Papley, Papley was Tom Papley. Yeah, he was all over the place as mm-hmm. well, and they were very good. And Franklin didn't do too much; he was pretty quiet in the game. Um, but yeah, they, they they had their opportunities. Collingwood, much like the a few weeks ago where they played uh, Gold Coast, and they just couldn't they couldn't crack them. They just they couldn't get the killer the couple of killer blows in when they had their opportunities. And um, the Swans they're a pretty good sign once they get a bit of a roll on. Mm. North Melbourne 13-9-87 beat Hawthorne 12-8-80 come from nowhere yeah I was watching the score while I was watching the Swans game and I was like mate they're getting pumped again and then all of a sudden bang 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 hang on they're in front what's going on here I actually flicked it over at one point and said what on earth is going on this was a blowout score and now it's like 63 and as I turned it on they kicked the goal to make it 63-61 I went wow <laughs> Some sort of turnaround, that. Yeah. Incredible. Good on him. Yeah, they on. and uh, I, I saw a stat. It's either four of the last five years or five of the last six years, Hawthorne is the team to give up the last team to win. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's Hawthorne. It's not a stat that you would associate with Alistair Clarkson either. Yeah, so Hawthorne's a team that lets the team that hasn't won one win. Win, right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I retweeted it. So That's I'm some sure sort of stat. It. Brisbane 19 10, 124. Gold Coast 7 9 51. Uh, Gold Coast back to earth with a thud in this game. I didn't see any of it. Yeah, I didn't see any of it either. I did see that uh, Jared Lyons, who I've picked up in my Super Coach team this week, got heaps of it again, which was good. But uh, Gold Coast missing Tuke Miller, who was out for a week. with a, He took the one-week guilty plea. Might have contested it and got off last week, but didn't. Took the one week. Um, he might have he might have paid Lyons a bit of attention this week, but uh, not to be. Uh, but yeah, look, Gold Coast, I like them. We'll see how they go next week. But um, yeah, Brisbane cruising now. Richmond. Jeez, this is talking about ones that got away. Richmond 13 9 87 beat GWS Giants 12 11 83. I saw this at three quarter time and went, This is over. No, it was. You knew that Richmond were going to come. Um, the second quarter uh, was the Tom Green and Jesse Hogan show. Jesse Hogan kicked four in the quarter. Uh, Tom Green had heaps of it, was winning clearances through the middle. Him and Hopper were great in the second quarter and they gapped him. And then Richmond came back. Uh, good game, entertaining game. Toby Green just doesn't get a call. Now I'm not going to complain too much about the last play down down in the in the forward line because I think Green was running with the flight of the ball and took his eyes off the ball and played the man and probably didn't deserve a free for that. And there might have been a holding after that when he sort of came out, probably a trip. But I'm not going to complain too much about that. Toby Green's out now for four weeks because um, <clears throat> in the goal square in the third quarter. 
he was ridden into the back. Um, and like it was, it was blatant, and um, it was a it was a free kick for all money, broken shoulder, and um, yeah, broken shoulder, yeah, wow, yeah. Uh, Nathan Broad rode him into the back, uh, rode him into the turf, and yeah, broken like so. Yeah, fractured shoulder. He's out for four weeks. That's pretty savage. Yeah, and he stayed on the ground. Eddie called it live. He goes, "That was in the back," and then they played on, and no call for Toby Green and. There's a now now there's a, a Twitter account if Toby Green did that or w- what if Toby did that something like that <laughs> yeah right um so yeah, follow that follow that account just search uh, I think it's what if Toby or if to- if Toby did that I think uh but yeah no no free there that Richmond ended up getting him in the end um Dusty Martin took out the umpire now talk about umpires in uh, referees in the NRL the goal umpire in the AFL. Going to the ground, didn't think that he was going to wind up with a dislocated shoulder. <laughs> Dusty ball bouncing around in the goal square. And Dusty going for it. The goal umpire is backpedaling. Dusty gets a foot to it. Whether he got it before or after the line, we'll never know because there was no angle that showed it. But the goal umpire who was getting taken out by Dusty at the time said, I think it's a goal, but can we review it? I don't know how he thought it was a goal because he was about to get pummeled. And he landed on the ground, like landed on the ground on his back, dislocated shoulder. He got replaced. Wow! You can't do these ones. You can't, you know, show us yeah. how big it is. Yeah. If, if you've got a, <laughs> a busted shoulder, so yeah, he got replaced yeah. in the goal square. Wow! Yeah, it was big. And so, to Dusty's credit, like Dusty's a nice guy. Like you know, he, it's all bravado and all that. But he 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 was checked on the umpy to see if he was all right in that. And yeah, so they gave it a goal because there's no conclusive evidence that it wasn't a goal. I, I can probably stomach that. There was just a couple of like, heaps of 50 50s that went Richmond's way. Yeah. And that was one of them. No, they always go to the Melbourne team's way, surely. Yeah. And, and they had the crowd, you know, <laughs> dimmer after the game complaining about the fact that they had to go to the Dome. You know, we hate, we hate going to the Dome. We're an MCG club, you know, and I guess the MCG's in the heart of Richmond. Like it's right there, Punt Road. But yeah, look, every Melbourne club, they've got the AFL have a deal with the Dome. They own the Dome. Um, that, all the Melbourne, all the Victorian clubs have got to play a game and out of there, and you know, suck it up. You got to play there, whatever. Um, yeah, you know, if ever they wanted to play a game there, they might as well play the Giants because we're not going to travel to the Dome. Like it, it'd be different if they had to play St Kilda there or, or the Western Bulldogs, whose home it is. Yeah, like they're playing an out of town team. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like you should be playing like a Perth team or yeah. an Adelaide team or something in there. Yeah, like you wouldn't want to play West Coast at the MCG. They play it so well. Yeah, that's right. Well, you'd rather play them in the, the Dome. dome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100. percent so he, that might be the reason why they don't want to play you there. I don't know. We can't play the MCG very well. Mind you, we bit Collingwood there in a prelim. But uh, yeah, Richmond got the win. They're looking good. So that game, those both those teams were four and four going into that game. And um, GWS would have got into the eight with a win. So it's a handy victory for Richmond. Um, I'll like them to make the top four now. I think they'll get on a roll. Uh, speaking of teams on a roll, Western Bulldogs, 15-6-96 beat Port Adelaide, 12-5-77. Caught bits and pieces of this game. I thought it would be closer than it was. I thought it'd be, you know, a kick in it. And well, I took Port, and I just thought that the way the Western Bulldogs lost to Richmond the week before, mm. they just like like Richmond done it twice now. Let teams get a lead and peg them back. At some point, that's going to start hurting them. They're not going to be able to peg back the leads. Um, but the the Bulldogs, I thought they may that was their first loss. That might be a bit of a Reality check. They may not come back as good, but by the looks of it, they come back better. Yeah. Well, the bits I saw, it looked like Bontempelli and McRae were just dominating in the midfield. And, you know, they've got them all over the park. They've got guns all over the park. But, yeah, uh, Port Adelaide still got a, a bunch of players out, so that they'll, they'll probably come good anyway. Uh, Essendon, 10-8-68. Yep. Uh, Frio, 8-13-61. This was a good battle. Did you see any of this game? No. Nah. It, it was it was an actual battle. They there was a bit of feeling in this game. I don't know. Do Essendon and Frio have any kind of rivalry? It's like pretty pretty random kind of rivalry. No game. players went from one to the other. Uh, I don't know, but they it was, there was a lot of feeling in it. A lot of like off the ball hits and and fifties and high shots and it had everything. It was, wow. It was yeah. It was pretty um pretty willing game and. You know, Frio led by 10 points a couple of times in the last quarter and Essendon kept coming and 
yeah, that was it was a, a quality win for us. And then I, I don't rate either of those sides. I don't think either of those sides are top eight sides. Mind you, Freo, I think we're in the eight before that game. Um, yeah, they would have been. But um, yeah, this uh, really willing game and and fun to watch. If you you can catch the highlights and and see a few of the big hits, good stuff. Uh, Melbourne beat Carlton 13 16 94 to 10 8 68. Here's another game. Carlton led. Um, Harry Mackay had a busted shoulder. They already lost a bloke with a knee injury very early in the game. They used their injury sub in like in the first 10 minutes. And Harry Mackay probably, you know, they, they, they don't want him to have any time off. So they probably didn't want to, they probably wouldn't have used him as the injury sub anyway, just in case. But his shoulder was busted for most of the game. He kicked a goal. He kicked a goal late in the game. Someone came along and, and like, you know, you sort of, when someone does something, someone's pump, like giving him a pump in the arm. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's, he's trying to give people like just a, just an elbow with the other, with the other arm because he was busted. Wow. Um, brave performance from him, but Melbourne too strong in the end. Oliver was very good in this game. Um, <clears throat> he got a, Oliver had a goal. The, the ball went up. I think it was from a, I don't know if it was from a ball up or just a, the ball bombed in there and he just roved it straight front and centre on at speed and kicked the goal. He was the only one who looked like getting the ball. He's just got it on a string at times when he, when he's on. and Yeah. Uh, Petrarca looked classy at times as well, but yeah. Carlton had a go and you know, that, that's all I can hope for, I suppose. Yeah. Crips and, Wal- uh, Crips and Walsh and not much else in the guts. So Carlton's still working on it. But Melbourne... Flying now, they're what are they now nine and zero. Is that yeah, nine, nine, nine games? Nine, yeah, yeah. yeah, and really well balanced side at the moment too. Tom McDonald looking good up front, uh, and May at the back. West Coast sixteen ten one oh six beat Adelaide eleven ten seventy six. See much of this game? I saw uh, bits and pieces of it. Um, West Coast were just flying from pretty much most of the game, and the gap just didn't really close. Adelaide made a game of it though, and they they came back within a kick a couple of times. But I like the forward line with Allen and Darling and Kennedy up front, and then the speed of Petrocelli out the back. Like, I like the way they set up sometimes with the big guys coming at the ball and Petrocelli on his own one on one out the back. They they geez they they get the ball forward. They they're hard to beat. Darling kicked five before half time. Five and a quarter. A quarter. Yeah, he's flying. Yeah. Um, but. The West Coast, for a large part of this season, have had many players out. Mm. Um, like this game here, for instance, they didn't have Shuey, they didn't have Yo, they didn't have Hearn. They didn't, didn't have... see much of Sheed. Was he out as well? Or... No, Sheed was there. He was pretty quiet yeah, okay. for the most part. Um, he come alive a bit in the third quarter, but yeah, they had no, like they had no no Yo, no Shuey, no Hearn, no Liam Ryan was out. The week bef- the the week before where they got the win they had no McGovern like he's mm. a big pretty big one that's out so they've, they've been there for a couple of weeks they've had no Kennedy and stuff like that they've got a, a few players out once they get all their players back they they could be a real threat Nick Nat's dominating in the ruck they get first use of it heaps mm. like just the, the he's so good as a tap ruckman and yeah that that makes it a lot easier for them because they get first entry into their forward 50 a lot of the time i just don't know how you fit them all in like yeah like like you're gonna have you're gonna have like if shuey and 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 yo come back you think they're gonna be in the middle with with um kelly mm. i don't know where you fit everyone in and then hearn comes back like we were in probably comes out he wasn't playing at the start of the year mm. yeah um but then, like, they're all going... The defensive guys aren't going too bad. The attacking guys are not going too too bad. And I just don't know how you fit them all in. Good problem to have, though. Yeah, it is. Definitely Forward line's flying, problem. though. Forward line's really good. And um, <clears throat> uh, Darling mm. <laughs> could have made it easier for himself. Like, he, did you see that the, there was one... He played on for some reason and then ended up nutty in the, <laughs> nutty in the defender. Yeah. And he's like, oh, geez, I got to have one there. I don't even think he he thought. I think he looked like he thought he touched him when he when it went through his legs. I, I, he has some brain explosions. That like, <laughs> I never forget the grand final when he had it. All he had to do was catch the ball, and it was a yes. and he dropped it. <laughs> and then, um, at least it didn't cost him the flag in that no, grand final. No. 
And then he, he, he dropped the sitter in this game as well in the second quarter, dropped the sitter, and then bounced, and then he snapped it around his around his body. <laughs> that, I think that was for the fifth goal. Yeah, wow. Um, Just going back <laughs> to the Sydney game, yeah. Hickey was very good in that game. Um, Hickey. Yeah, against Grundy, and he was he was quite good for the Swans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, Hickey's been good for him all year when he's been Yeah, here. he he's... was... Oh, I haven't seen much of the Swans, and he really stood out. Like, him and Heaney were really good. Mm. Heaney was sort of everywhere, and... Every time Collingwood at like one point, every time Collingwood like the break away, he knew he was there. Like it was amazing how how much he just popped up. Yeah, but yeah, that that was pretty good. Good eh? Um, Should the we ladder. Tip? Well, let's talk about the ladder first. Yep. yep. Um, that's the NRL. Let's find the AFL ladder. All right, AFL ladder. Melbourne out on top as we mentioned, nine and zero there on thirty six points. Western Bulldogs just the one loss on thirty two. Those two are flying at the top. Uh, Geelong. Brisbane, Port Adelaide, Sydney, and West Coast all on 24 points. That's down to number seven. Richmond, the eighth on 20. Then you've got the GWS Giants, Fremantle, and St. Kilda on 16. Uh, and I reckon that's where you can put the line. But then you've got Essendon, Carlton, Gold Coast, and Adelaide on 12. Collingwood, Hawthorne on eight, and North Melbourne on four. At least the eight has a winning record. Unlike yes. the NRL. Eight does have a winning record. Yes. <laughs> I like the NRL, it's four and six in the eight. I like the GWS Giants to make the finals. I think that they're coming on all right. So and who who bails out? Out of those, if if I was gonna drop one out, I'd probably drop Sydney out. I reckon I reckon they've got a lot of kids in the side and yeah, they're six and three, but I think they can they can start dropping a few games. And I think they're the ones that can drop out. Mind you, West Coast they looked all right, and if if they start getting guys back in the midfield, they're probably going to be okay. But yeah, the one team I can see dropping out is Sydney for GWS. Now you got to look at West Coast, right? West Coast, mind you, now yeah. no Toby Green for four weeks, and they've been very good with Toby. Toby Green's been awesome; he's probably been our best player. So we'll see how they go with him out. I hear it a lot, people saying West Coast out. Now take the hundred point flogging from Geelong out of there, out out out. They they took the Western Bulldogs to the limit. Mm. and got beaten late in that game, and should have beaten St Kilda and got run down late in that game. So they win them two games, all of a sudden they're, they're sitting at um, eight and eight and one, and they're in second, or or third. Yeah. So it, it's I don't think West Coast are that far off, and they've been playing with, like, the, the players they got out, being Yo and Shuey and Hearn, they're pretty key players, that team. Yeah, true. So... When they get back, I, I think they'll be fine. Um, tipping. Me, Eric, and Swansation all, all got eight. And I don't know what they got wrong, although can we bring that up? Well, we can. Um, so the one I got wrong was Frio, and they led late in the fourth quarter. They got run down by Essendon, unfortunately. Uh, Eric got Port Adelaide wrong against the Bulldogs, and Swansation all got uh, Hawthorne against North wrong. So, yeah, me and Eric both tipping North Melbourne in that game. Yeah, wow. Good tips. We're the only ones to tip north in that game. All right. Uh, shall we tip this week? Yes. And Timmy's on. Timoy and Princess K are on top. Knight is the new first. Is 58. Irk, 57. And someone else on 56. Mm. So Timoy and Princess K on 59 leading it. All right. Friday night at the Gabba. Brisbane Lions on Richmond. What a game this is. A pretty good game. I'm going to go Richmond, but I hope they don't leave, give too much of a lead. I'll go Brisbane by 16 points. I think they can win by two and a bit goals. Uh, it's very possible. Like they, If they get the lead and, and Richmond think they can keep trying to peg teams back, mm. it's not going to happen all the time. Looked like a bit of a training run for Brisbane and Richmond had a pretty tough game against GWS. Uh, Melbourne Cricket Ground, the early game, Carlton versus Hawthorne. You don't come. You don't get beaten by the team coming last and beat and, and win this game. Car- Carlton will win. Carlton had a red-hot goal against Melbourne too. Carlton for me. Uh, GMHBA Stadium, Cadinia Park, Geelong, and Gold Coast. Geelong don't lose. Geelong only lose to GWS down there, so I'll go Geelong. Uh, Adelaide Oval, Adelaide versus Melbourne. Melbourne would be too good. Melbourne will make it 10-0. and 0. Marvel Stadium, Western Bulldogs, and St. Kilda. I think St. Kilda will put a bit of a fight, but they won't be good enough to beat the Dogs. I reckon the Dogs might put one through them in this one. I think the Dogs are screaming out for a flogging. Oh, Western Bulldogs by heaps. Uh, Opta Stadium, Frio versus Sydney. For, oh, I think Sydney will win it. I think Frio are very good at home. Frio aren't that bad. 
Uh, they're they're a lot better at home than they are on the road, and um, yeah, they'll they'll wish that, that's one that got away against Essendon. I think they if, can beat. If Sydney, Sydney want to make the eight, these are the games they're going to win. Yeah, I think they won't. Freo, uh, Giant Stadium, GWS versus the West Coast Eagles. West Coast Eagles, a very good record at this stadium. I am going to tip West Coast. Hopefully, the umpires get all of Nick, Nick, Nick Nat's throws. Uh, uh, he's still bitter uh, about that. That was a match winner. It was quality. It was great. And it was glorious. I'll go Giants. And Giants, that might get him back in the eight, I reckon. Let's have a look at the ladder. What's the what's the percentage West Coast and the Giants? West Coast 112, Giants 98. Maybe not. And mind you, they're, um, they're a game behind. So they're chasing Richmond. If Brisbane beat Richmond, mm. we're a chance to get back in the eight. Uh, Giants. Melbourne Cricket Ground, Collingwood and Port. I'm hoping Port wear their prison bars jerseys in this game. <laughs> um, they're not going to. <laughs> Um, do you reckon there's going to be some feeling in this game? I'll give you a tip. After We never got a chance to talk about it because we didn't talk about it last week. Yeah. But how good was it walking in the dressing sets, changing their jersey, and then doing all the team song and the press stuff in the prison bar one? That's an absolute slap to the face to the AFL and Eddie Maguire. I loved every minute of it. You know what I love about this? <laughs> the, the thing that gets me more than anything else, and I love it. I, this is the kind of stuff that makes footy fun. Because none of it matters. None, no. Nothing matters. No. <laughs> but I love that Collingwood fans on social media get so Angry. rolled up about yeah, it. Yeah, Like, why do you even care what Port Adelaide are going to wear out in the... Like, I don't care. When the Gold Coast came in, did you care that they're also wearing blue and gold? No. I don't care. That's, they're, they're from the beach. They wear... The sand is yellow and the water's blue. Of course they're going to wear blue and gold. Why would they wear anything else? That's right. Like, it, it blows my mind that Collingwood fans care so much and I love it. And I love that Port Adelaide are hitting back. <laughs> and I reckon this game is going to have a lot of feeling in it. I don't, I, won't, I don't know that the players actually care. No, but I, I still reckon there'll be a bit of feeling <laughs> in it. <laughs> but I love I love that fans care so much about like ridiculous stuff. You reckon the Collingwood fans aren't going to be like 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 vile in this game? Oh, of course they are. So of course they are. I'm going to I'm going for Port <laughs> because, oh. because I'm on Team Port for this. <laughs> Port are, Port are just better at football than them. No, but I'm just on Team Port for the whole argument. <laughs> Collingwood are 16th and Port Adelaide are 5th for a reason. I don't care. I'm on Team Port. Dude, I'm on there for all the arguments. I'm on yeah. Team Port. Um, I love a villain too. I love a villain. And that's the kind of villainous stuff that doesn't hurt anyone. That's great. That's great. It's like when Penrith... When Penrith... When, when when the Canberra Raiders came out and carried on about the Panthers, the way they celebrate tries, as if you wouldn't celebrate an NRL try, right? Yeah. I loved that Penrith the next week came out and just shook hands politely. It was the best, right? <laughs> I love it. I love a villain. Go Port Adelaide. I'm yeah. all the way Port. Yeah. Uh, last game, Marvel Stadium, Essendon and North Melbourne. Essendon. Uh, yeah, I don't think North can go back to back and uh, I'll go Essendon in that and I'll stick with Jalapenos. Uh, do you have anything else for AFL? Nothing else for AFL. Okay. Um, just quickly for other sport. I'm not yes. going to worry about Super Coach. I've got, a, got something to say. I've got yeah. a... Um, so we'll do other sport, but qu- very quickly because yep. we've got to get in the car yep. very soon. Yep. Um, I've got to, for next week, I'll have a new plane. We're going to call it Short Shorts. Sweet. All right. Hope it's got that like, people eater or something. Um, very quickly, other, I'm just going to be a quick, emo- a little bit of motorsport. Obviously, Supercar not on to the 28th, 30th of uh, May at Winton. F1 is on the tw- Sunday, the 23rd of May. Monaco is the next one for that. There's been some changes with the F1 Turkish Grand Prix scrapped. Mm-hmm. Um, the French Grand Prix is going a week earlier. Syria Grand Prix is coming in the week after that. So the second Styrian Grand Prix. Yeah, and Austria at some point could have two. Right. Well, that's Austria, isn't the yeah. Styrian? The Styrian was Austria the second week. Yeah, they went Austrian and Styrian. They call it the Styrian Grand Prix, but it was yeah, Austria yeah, for the second yeah, yeah. straight week. So, so they could, um, yeah. So I think they got back to back weeks at some point. So I right. don't know. I, I don't understand the whole calendar, but their Turkish one's gone. Apparently, I was t- talking to a Turkish guy, and apparently, Turkish pushing a lot of sport out at the moment because of their COVID. Situation. Well, COVID not very good. Yeah, yeah. So they're so. pushing a lot of sport out. They pushed the uh, Champions League out. Yeah. Um, and and whatnot. So they're pushing a lot of sport out. So. Um, yeah, F1 yeah. Has and changed. I think F1 would choose not to go there also. Yeah. So I and think it's a win-win for both. But Monaco is next for the Grand uh, Formula 1, which is great. I love Monaco, even though yep. you can't get past anyone. 
MotoGP hammer brought my hammer MotoGP listening. Uh, Jack Miller gets another win, mm. back to back wins for the Aussie, and he had to do a slow lap or something. What's yeah, it, what's all that about? They got something penalty lap or something now. Now I haven't really watched it. I have to sort of get me watch right now. I wanted to watch the Moto Three, but I, I got caught up watching the Matty John so mm-hmm. the other day. Uh, but because I was so into hearing what everyone had to say about the the things, um, and their next race is on Sunday, May. Uh, 30, which is the Italian Grand Prix. NBA, before we go. Yes. Uh, so today was the last game. They had a super last day, 15 games. Everyone played. Uh, the New York Knicks beat Boston Celtics to finish with the fourth best record in the Eastern Conference. Uh, the Knicks will play Atlanta in the 4-5 matchup. Both teams finished 41-31. and 31. In the head-to-head, it was Knicks 3-0 over Atlanta, although two of those games Atlanta played with their previous coach. New coach came in, Knicks beat him again, scored 130 on him. So I'm going to predict Knicks in five in that series. I think the Knicks can just better than him. Um, in the 3-6 matchup is Milwaukee and Miami. Awesome matchup. Milwaukee trying to prove the doubters wrong that they're not just non-winners. Giannis and Tedekumpo have been probably the best player in the league for the last three years. Can he shake that tag of being a non-winner? This year, I don't think so, but there's other reasons for that. I think they can beat Miami in the first round. I'll go Milwaukee in six. Um, <clears throat> the play-in tournament, Boston and Washington in the first game. The winner of that will run seventh. The loser will get a second chance against the winner of Indiana and Charlotte. Uh, I will tip Indiana to beat Charlotte, and then I'll tip... Um, so in the first game, I'll tip Washington to beat Boston. I think Boston have got too many injuries. Washington will run seventh. Uh, then I think Boston can beat either Indiana or Charlotte, so Boston will run eighth. Uh, in those series, Brooklyn will wipe whoever they play and Philadelphia will wipe whoever they play. Um, getting into the into the Eastern Finals, if we get that far, I think it'll be Philly and Brooklyn. Honestly, I can't see it with Milwaukee. Good three-point shooting, but if, if teams can nullify Giannis, I think you can go a long way to beating them. And I just think Brooklyn, if they're three, Harden, Durant, and Irving are all fit, I think they wipe everyone. They're just so they so beautiful to watch in basketball now. It's amazing. So I'll go Brooklyn to win the East. And in the West... Utah finished with the best record. Phoenix, the team that I backed at $51 with the second best record. Denver, third. LA Clippers, fourth. Dallas, fifth. And Portland, sixth. So the 4-5 is LA Clippers and Dallas. One of those teams won't make it past the first round. I'll give you the hot tip. The other team won't make it past the second round. Um, <clears throat> the other man that we know already is Denver versus Portland. Awesome matchup. Jokic just controlling it in the center for Denver. Uh, Dame Lillard shooting the lights out for Portland. That's going to be a great matchup. Um, LA Lakers and Golden State for the seven seed. I'll tip LA Lakers to win that game. Uh, Memphis and San Antonio in the 9-10 matchup. doesn't matter. Whoever wins that will lose to Golden State. So I'm going to go LA Lakers seventh to play Phoenix. Horror matchup for my Phoenix Suns because um, if the one thing they can't handle is LeBron and AD up front, I'm, I'm concerned that the Lakers will beat them. Uh, and then the Utah-Golden State game uh, matchup. I think Utah will have too much across the board. Steph Curry has been awesome, but he needs more help. So um, in the end, I think it'll come down to the Lakers from the seven seed, I think can get deep. LA Clippers, perennial non-winners. Um, it's going to be hard for Denver because they're probably going to have to play. Uh, no, well, they won't, will they? Uh, seventh, seven, two, seven, and th- three, six. Yeah, Denver will probably play LA in the second round. Could be a Utah LA Lakers Western Finals, um, but if if LeBron and AD are fit, doesn't matter where they play, they're going to win. If it's the Lakers and Nets in the NBA Finals, that would be awesome because both teams play really fun basketball. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it, mate. If the Knicks can win a series, you know, just the fact that they're involved in playoff basketball, I'm excited. I'm here for it. Go the Knicks. Fantastic. Yeah, that's all I got. Uh, tell them to find us. Batsandballspodcast.com. Uh, this show will come out tomorrow morning, hopefully. Yep. Uh, so Tuesday morning, batsandballspodcast.com. Uh, at batsandballspod on Twitter. I'm Pies Josh. Brendan is Brendan Smith 5 We've got Hammer, not batting 11. Uh, we've got Colby at Colby6ref. Mendy at Big Mendy 180 um, Get around it. Yep. And we are members of the No Phony Podcast Network at No Phony Network on Twitter or nophonynetwork.com for all the independently awesome podcasts. Yeah, I had I got that wrong about a thousand times lately. Mm. <laughs> um, what are we going to apologize for? Oh, you go. 
I'm going to apologise for every wood duck that thought the NRL cracking down on high shots was making the game soft. You've been listening to a podcast on the No Phony Podcast Network. Visit nophonynetwork.com for more independently awesome shows. Thank you.